the H-12 Prep Baseball Report. Visit the H-12 Sports Academy off of Old Highway 80 in El Cajon. Get lessons from top local instructors. Use our team workout and cage facility specials, newly renovated for baseball and softball. Plus, have your performance metrics analyzed using patented technology in hit tracks. That's the H-12 Sports Academy off of Old Highway 80 in El Cajon. Call Scott Hoppy Hopgood at 619-328-1412. That's the H-12 Sports Academy in El Cajon. Welcome to the H-12 Prep Baseball Report. I'm Ramon Scott and I'm joined by Dave Dickens of EastCountySports.com. Also, Zach Owens of the Helix Highlanders, Eric Smelko of the Helix Highlanders. We got three Highlanders on the screen here and one Granite Hills Eagle. Let's get right to it. Our feature here on the Prep Baseball Report, the East County Top Five. Well, we're going to start things off. No surprise, the Helix Highlanders are number one in our pool this week. Uh, the fourth-ranked Highlanders went two and one at the Lions Tournament, including a win over uh, number eight Elk Grove in the state of California. Uh, Eric tied the game with a base hit in the bottom of the sixth inning uh, that put the Highlanders close to the title game, but we uh, missed out on the chance to play uh, in, in the title game because of the loss to uh, Tory Pines. Uh, they're going to resume play in the GMC this week at the uh, uh, against the Red Hot Scripps Ranch team. Uh, going to play Helix, and then they'll also play Benita Vista. Helix two and one in the GMC so far. I still think that keeps us alive yeah. for yes, the sir. championship game. Uh, I want to talk about also the Aztec Foothiller title game that was rained out uh, last Saturday, uh, I be uh, believe, right? And then you guys had to come back and play Eastlake again. Uh, and we threw a couple of sophomores against them. Eastlake uh, won that game. Tell me a little bit about the, the game against the Titans. Uh, do you guys expect to win that game with our uh, sophomores pitching? Yeah, I think so. We, uh, we got a couple really talented sophomores that we got on the mound. Uh, our pitching staff is really young this year. So uh, our sophomores are going to carry us throughout the year, and we expect to beat. Uh, we expect to beat these like uh, in the playoffs this year. We're expecting to be in every game with them. Both games were tightly contested, uh, a couple plays here and there, and it could have gone either way. So uh, I think we'll see them in the playoffs, and we'll be right back with them, and we'll have those two kids on the mound again. And we expect to go out there and compete. Zach, you professed to have a, some good looks at uh, Grant that time. Uh, it, obviously, uh, anybody would find him tough to hit, uh, yes, yes, but uh, just repetition, get uh -huh. a chance to see him again? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think this my, that was my fourth time seeing him in the past two years. I just think uh, the, the at-bats became more comfortable. Um, just seeing the seeing the below a little bit more, uh, getting it's really big up there. So uh, the more you get to see him, the better. Uh, better off you are, and I think I was just more comfortable in the box uh, every time. Dave? And then you got a pretty good defense behind you as well. Oh, very, yes. Uh, so we expect to, uh, we don't expect to make very many errors back there. We uh, um, practice a lot. I mean, uh, Holland's got us uh, in tip-top shape every game. That's what he said after I talked to Cole. I think it was last week he was saying, I mean, with the top talent, Mind you, no injuries. Yes. You guys should definitely be able to take care of East Lake. I mean, if you have that many looks, you should definitely be able to come out on top this time. Yep, we expect to compete with them uh, every game we get to see them. Well, nice. we'll see what happens uh, in that tournament. I just want to talk about some fun you guys had uh, last week. Uh, <laughs> Eric and Zach, uh, Coach Holland uh, planned a little uh, paintball trip, or maybe you guys talked him into it, uh, going up there to the uh, uh, paintball park and shot a little paintball. I saw it on Twitter. You guys are having a lot of fun. And oh, when wow. we started talking about it, you guys were giggling and grinning like uh, really was a team bonding experience. Was it? Uh, uh, was that what it was intended to do, or did you guys just want to go have some fun? It was absolutely planned for a team bonding experience because be, being so young this year, we don't really know each other very well. And so Coach Holland did a great job in planning this uh, team bonding exercise. And we went out there, and he was running around, and we had a lot of fun together. So. All in all, it was great, and he came up with that great idea, so we can't complain at all. Did he participate? Did Coach Holland oh, yeah. participate as well? He was out there, yeah, running around. He and did, did he uh, get a couple of you guys? Or? Oh, he, he got us a lot of times. Yeah. He, he's, he's, a, he's a sleeper in paintball. You better watch out for him. Nice. 
Well, I mentioned all the uh, Division One talent on the Highlanders roster this season. A couple of teams, you and the Cathedral Dons, uh, just a, a lineup full of guys uh, uh, heading to four-year schools. I mean, what's it like to name some of these teammates uh, that you know are going places uh, uh, and just what they uh, contributed to the team this year? You know, so we have senior Brandon Peterson, and that kid is the hardest worker you will ever know. And he's going up to San Jose State, and nicest kid ever, and he absolutely can rake. So watch out for him in D1 baseball next year because he's going to have a hard impact on it with that. Uh, we got Austin Kretschmar. He's, uh, he's our leader out in the infield, uh, playing shortstop. He's going to Stanford next year. Uh, Great team right now. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> We expect him to lead us on, on out on the field defensively. Uh, doesn't make many mistakes out there. Can swing the bat a little bit too. Um, we're loaded. Tell me about uh, Jordan Thompson. Uh, he's a sophomore, I believe, and he's uh, targeted for LSU. How does a sophomore from La Mesa, in La Mesa, California, end up on the LSU's list uh, with still two years to play? I mean, LSU, come on. Oh, it's absolutely the amount of talent this guy has and the work ethic he has and the fact that he can swing the bat and throw over 87 miles an hour on the mound. It's unbelievable at what he can do from a talent's perspective. So, I mean, what are you guys looking at? If, if someone were to ask him, we're getting closer, we're approaching league pretty shortly here, who would you say is your biggest rival or your biggest competitor? You know, so in our league, we really can't have a top competitor. We have Granite Hills, they are very well coached with uh, Coach Davis's 400 wins, right? Correct? And at El Cap, their coaching staff is very young, but they have very experienced players like Blake Payton. And Santana, we have uh, Mr. Olderwald's son out there. He can absolutely play both football and baseball. And so, and of course, with our rivals, Gross Mod, yeah. it's. We always love playing Grossmont, and they're having a great season so far. So we're excited to play. Okay. That's always a nice one. The, what do they call it? The uh, the musket. Uh. The coveted musket. <laughs> yeah, we we we've got we have that musket for a little bit longer. We'll see until next year. But there's no perpetual trophy for the uh, for the baseball uh, team. Not, not, not at all. all. Not we yet. might make something. In fact, uh, maybe you know. Bill and I, uh, your dad used to, we used to go back and forth because uh, he's a Hiller and I'm a Highlander and so many uh, rivalries in every sport uh, we used to argue back and forth. So great transition. These guys are real pros. Let's talk about number two in our poll, Dave. We picked the Grossmont Foothillers, uh, number two right now. Uh, their record isn't as good as Granite Hills. They're six, five, and one, but they're ahead of them in the media poll. They moved up to seventh this past week, uh, heading into the Lions tournament where uh, they lost to Elk Grove and RB, but how about the victory, guys? Uh, Jack Hyde, the junior from Grossmont, pitches a no-hitter against perfect game ranked nationally number three in the country, Bishop Gorman. He went out and delivered a two-hitter, uh, a no-hitter. Uh, his two-seamer was really working in a big time in that game. It was a two-nothing win. This week, uh, Grossmont's gonna play at Benita Vista and versus Saints in the GMC this week. Uh, Eric, uh, you played with uh, some of these uh, foothillers uh, in the past, almost five years ago. I know you're an old man now, but let's go back to uh, around, I think, 2012, uh, when you guys were in La Mesa National, and you guys won the District 33 Championship, uh, and went up, uh, finally got beat by those uh, Encinitas uh, teams yeah. up there, but I want to talk to you about a game. You guys played Oceanside in an incredible 7-6 to six game in that uh, uh, section championship, where you had two home runs, and Austin Odom had a clutch two-out home run in the top of the sixth inning. Tell me about that game, that moment that Austin hit that home run when you were teammates, and the, how exciting your parents were, and everybody, when you win one of those Little League games, it's a great feeling. Oh, it's absolutely a huge feeling. I mean, Austin Odom really stole the show from me. Oh, I had a, I had a great day, you know, and he comes out there in the sixth and hits a home run, and he, he, he steals the show. He's a a great player then and he's still a great player now and um one of the guys also that was on the team was uh, joe williams although he's hurt right now but when he comes back he's going to be a very powerful pitcher on the mound and you should really watch out for him and you had uh, jackson hewlett on that team who was a big force last year in the gross month uh, title run for their cif title he was a great pitcher last year he was on that team with you oh he was absolutely he was a nat he's a natural leader and him going up to saint mary's right now he's having a very good year and so being able to play with those three guys and 
being able to experience how they hold, they, uh, hold themselves together, it's, it was a blessing for me, so. Dave, just to let you know my research, I even went into the Little League regular season uh, that year where Eric pitched a perfect game in La Mesa National. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I mean, and, and, and the same thing is, you know, Grossmont's got Jordan as their coach yes. as well. And I mean, with all those seasoned players and guys like that you played with, I think that's key, just like you have Cole. I mean, those are probably two of the most recognized besides James Davis from Granite. And like you said, I mean, those are the reason they're in our top three mm -hmm. is the skipper is huge. Yeah. Very good. And some other guys you guys are familiar with uh, from that Foothiller Scott, guys like uh, Chris Giovango, yes. one of the hottest uh, hottest players in East County right now. Uh, yeah. Any other Foothillers? Uh, man, uh, those are going to be, right. not to discredit Granite Hills, I mean, but, or El Cap or Santana, but maybe these three teams, Helix, Granite Hills, Grossmont, this is going to be a must-see must -see ball yeah, games this be, season. It will be, for sure. Okay, number three is uh, Granite Hills. Uh, they moved into 11th in the media poll before the Lions tournament. They went uh, two and two at the Lions. We're including that consolation win, uh, which was uh, Coach James Davis's 400th career victory. Congratulations, uh, Coach Davis. I mean, he's had, talk about talented players coming through the system. Uh, they certainly have had their guys over there uh, at Granite. I mean, how about what Jordan Burden is doing right now at San Diego State? I mean, he is absolutely tearing up. Noah Cummings at uh, uh, Oral Roberts, one of the best hitters in the country at any level, uh, doing great things out there. Dave, I want to talk about uh, senior Braden Anderson of the Eagles, who you told me about before the season, who had a blood clot in his leg just a few months prior to the season. I guess there was some concern about his long-term health and the health of his uh, leg, but he legged one out, if you will. He scored the game-winning <laughs> run against West Lynn, Oregon, scoring from second base on the base hit. Uh, tell me about uh, Braden's story. He just came back for his first game, scored that run. Well, you know, it was, it was kind of tough when I spoke with Coach Davis earlier in the season. You know, we, 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 uh, we lost three, or two and a half, as he would say. You know, with Trevor Barnes, unfortunately, and then Will Burton. But then everybody, after the dust was settled, they had forgotten about Braden. And what he, he had, he was at the ICU, I believe, uh, the cardiac ICU, as James said, uh, for I think five days before they released him. And I think it was a week after that that he could even get out on the field and even throw a baseball. He was only cleared to throw the baseball. Not step onto the field, but throw a baseball. So in the short amount of time that he's had, and then being able to actually play and then win the game mm -hmm. is huge. And I, and I hear also from several other players, other Eagles, that he's instrumental on the bench as well. So he's, he's a true leader, a true trooper to come back from something like that. I mean, I, I, just a shout out to the Eagles as a whole. Everything they've gone through, I mean, they've, they've really come back with a vengeance. Well, we're expecting uh, this race to be absolutely incredible, and I, I don't think any team really uh, can expect to get the sweep in league play. I mean, we're going to try. Every team's going to give it their best. But a uh, couple of guys on their team right now just tearing up. Sean McGrew, uh, 359 batting average and five doubles. And I want to ask uh, Zach about uh, his play this past offseason on the dovetail uh, club team where you played with Trevor Hazelhurst, who Looks like he's going to be cranking it up here for this senior season. His ERA is just barely over two right now. And you played with Will Burton, and you've had some uh, some memories with yeah. him over the years. Uh, tell us about your experiences uh, with Will. I'm sure everybody would love to hear him. Oh, yeah, well, uh, Will and Joe Williams from uh, Grossmont, they actually pitched a combined no-hitter this summer at Point Loma, and I got the opportunity to catch both of them in that game. Which is an awesome experience uh, to catch a no-hitter between the two of them, three East County kids together. and. Uh, Got to play with Trevor. Trevor Trevor's just an awesome kid, uh, all around great player. Can throw it, can can hit, and his bat speed's incredible. And it was just really fun summer with them. Great to be with them. It was uh, it was like an all East County uh, all East County team. And so it's just great to bond with those guys, and then get to go and compete with them out uh, out in the high school season. So it was great to uh, great to get to know him. And Will was a Will was a great kid, and he's gonna be missed dearly. And uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had to catch him this summer. And it was, a, it was a blast. The H-12 Prep Baseball Report. 
Visit the H-12 Sports Academy off of Old Highway 80 in El Cajon. Get lessons from top local instructors. Use our team workout and cage facility specials, newly renovated for baseball and softball. Plus, have your performance metrics analyzed using patented technology in hit tracks. That's the H-12 Sports Academy off of Old Highway 80 in El Cajon. Call Scott Hoppy Hopgood at 619-328-1412. That's the H-12 Sports Academy in El Cajon. Number four in our poll is the Foothills Christian Knights. Now they're a seven and five record. And even though we know that some of the, the Grossmont Conference teams may end up with a little bit stronger rating uh, as the weeks progress, Right now, Foothills Christian, and if you look at some of the computerized rankings, are ahead of several Grossmont Conference teams, primarily based on the strength probably of their uh, one loss record, seven wins and five losses. They went just a one and three at the Lions Tournament. Uh, you guys were out there, they played a game uh, uh, prior to you guys, uh, one of the first days of the Lions Tournament. What'd you see in the Knights? Oh, they were well coached. I mean, they played the, base the game of baseball the correct way. And as you said, the skipper, really means a lot to the team and how they perform in, on the field and off the field. And they were very well coached and they played the game the right way. So they should be very good this coming season. They seem pretty organized to you, don't they? I mean, that was a, that's the vibe I get. One of those teams, you know, that, I mean, they, they're all organized, they're, they're together, they're playing as a team, like you said, the way baseball should be played. There's no individuals. Absolutely. Well, they uh, went on to win that Bullies Championship game that morning. We were concerned that it was going to be rained out like your game, guy's game against Eastlake was, but they postponed their game till 2 o'clock. They got that game in and beat Del Norte in the championship. That was revenge for an earlier 10 to nothing loss. So, they played that in La Jolla, right? I believe so, yeah. yeah. So good weather uh, allowed them to get that uh, win in. Uh, they're going to play three games in the GMC this week, uh, including East County teams, Mel Miguel and Monta Vista, and that's a rematch with the Matadors. You might remember a 5-4 uh, Knights victory a couple of weeks ago. Uh, plus, the Knights, the like, the, like the Highlanders, have some players becoming transfer eligible. So maybe that will allow them to stay in our rankings, and obviously they're a championship contender uh, in their CIF division. They've got guys like Corbin Harris and Jelani Brown, our guest last week, uh, both hitting uh, 400 or better right now. Yeah, absolutely, and, and there's a couple others, uh, and, and just reflecting on that game, the last time they did meet, uh, there were some pretty muddy conditions that they had to play in, so um, one of the key veterans they have out there, Jack Wirtz, is, is catching over there for Foothills, and I guess he's been pretty key also to the pitchers. The pitchers really like throwing to him. Number five is the Santana Sultans, and I'd like to first take a moment to talk about a, a great coach, uh, Jerry Henson, who passed away this past week. Uh, just a joy to be around, and the guy was, I, your dad can uh, attest to this, Dave, but Coach Henson was a quote machine, especially when it came to uh, the ins and outs of baseball. I mean, you almost didn't even have to interview him. You could almost make it up because you knew he was going to come out with that perfect cliche, exactly what happened in the game, but uh, what a joy for around to be a, a, for a reporter. Uh, Coach Henson, you've, uh, you remember Coach Henson. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, uh, I was with uh, my dad's wife, uh, Wanda the other day and she was actually commenting and she said can you believe that Henson is gone now she said he was like a computer like actually talking to a computer over the phone and that he had every last detail of the color shirt you wore two years ago <laughs> so he was he was he was him and my dad were like carbon copies if you will yeah, they loved to wear those Hawaiian shirts, I'll tell you that much. Uh, anyway, the Sultans ended up cheering up a little bit after their uh, slow start. They made the Lions Premier Division Final with a 2-1 record. That's why you elevated them into the five spot, uh, despite their subpar record. Uh, they had the 4-2 win over uh, the Crespi Celts to earn that uh, berth, uh, where they eventually lost to that Scripps Ranch team 9-2, but Scripps Ranch is playing incredible right now. T.C. Simmons had uh, a two-run hit in the sixth in support of freshman Tyler Glowacki uh, uh, in that uh, win over Crespi. Uh, the Sultans have been an all-or-nothing unit uh, this season. Multiple big innings. They usually score two, four, six innings in an inning, but just too many goose eggs right now. This week, no easy task in the GMC. They're going to play Eastlake and Madison. Dave, anything on the Sultans? 
Well, if they can split between the two of them, but you got to remember, Granite Hills the, pretty much took it to Madison two weeks ago. Um, they, they let them come back, uh, I believe it's at the top of the seven, but uh, Granite Hills beat up on them pretty good. So I think Santana does have a good chance on Madison. East Lake will probably be a little tougher, but if they can split, I think they're doing pretty well. Uh, you mentioned, uh, of course, Eric, a few moments ago about your league rival, the Sultans. Zach, I'll ask you about the Sultans and what you might know about them other than uh, we got to still respect, even though we might have them. Let it Leave it to us to put El Cab and Santana a little bit below these three. You guys mentioned them as if there's a five-team uh, five team contention in this league, the Sultans. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think uh, every team in our league is, uh, is going to be competitive because of our uh, each coach is going to have each team out there prepared every week. Uh, Santana's no joke in that respect. They're going to come out ready to play every game and they're uh, they're going to be well coached and they're going to come out here and give you your best uh, their best effort every week. I'm going to skip over to the Valley League a little bit. I'm going to say number 6 uh, is Steel Canyon. Uh, the Cougars went 2 and 1 in the Lions Premier Division for new coach Jesse Evans. They just missed out on the uh, Lions uh, final. Uh, they look to be maybe the early favorite now in the GBL. I'm not sure because you think this race is crazy. That race might be even crazier down in the Valley League. Uh, they had the uh, their 2-2 uh, two, two and 1 in the Lions tournament. They beat Santana in that uh, game to get if you will, it was a, a close game, but junior Aaron Taylor had a home run and a double. You guys are uh, familiar with him, and he's hot right now. Yeah, I played, uh, he was on our summer team this summer. Uh, a little scrappy, scrappy kid. Uh, funny, really funny, great kid. Um, but uh, he'll be out there leading them. Scrappy player, he'll be uh, on the base pass, tear on the base pass if he gets on. Uh, he'll be coming around to score. Yeah, he's hitting 400 right now, and junior Richie Pedrin's batting 471. Dave, on the Cougars? And let's not forget about uh, two weeks ago, Trevor Back had a uh, shutout. I believe it was a two-hit shutout, complete game. So he's a, he's a senior. Uh, he he did pretty well last year as a junior. So he's, he's coming up as well on the hill. So it, that should also help him defensively. Absolutely, that shutout was against Mira Mesa. He had a two and a half ERA last year, and this year so far, 2.15. So you could see the uh, curve there on that one. He's going to be a tough pitcher. And they have an interesting contest in the GMC uh, that you'll take note of on Monday. They're going to play the Christian Patriots. So I'd say that's uh, going to be a toss up right now for sure. Number seven is Monta Vista. They're six and five. Uh, they had a rough go uh, at the Lions uh, going 0 and 3, but uh, they're back in the GMC this week where they're 3 and 0. So maybe they're facing a little bit more uh, competition that uh, they can handle down here at this. Uh, they're going to play uh, at Mar Vista, then a game at home, as we mentioned, against Foothills Christian. I want to mention freshman Ernie Arambula. Uh, he had the game-winning hit in Red Hot Abraham Sanchez pitched eight-inning complete game to beat Castle Park. Uh, the Monarchs are all about good pitching right now as junior John Gully is 2-0. He beat Sweetwater in the GMC. And uh, senior Ivan Plazola, who's uh, done his job so far. I mean, he might be the best of all three of them, and he's kind of been on the back burner a little bit. We know uh, he's a proven commodity. Well, I talked to uh, Craig New, head coach of the Monarchs, and he said the, the key thing for them is if they can just stop shooting themselves in the foot, they're, they're, they're beating themselves. Um, but he said it's a, it's a youth thing and that he thinks they're going to grow through this and by the time league comes that they should be able to compete. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, James Davis's 400th win. How about uh, his friend over at uh, Christian High School, uh, Coach Mike Mitchell. He won his 500th career game as Patriot uh, coach in that Lions tournament. Brad Jeremiah, this guy can do it all, can't he? He hit a grand slam in the win over Del Oro. And then Christian came back and won their consolation game in 12 innings. Could you imagine playing a 12-inning wow. consolation yep, game? That's, that's a uh, long game. Luke Rinkoffs, who already pitched a no-hitter this season, he had seven innings of relief. And sophomore Trace Ramos, who pitched a complete game earlier in the week in his uh, first varsity start in that milestone victory, uh, Ramos had a sacrifice fly in the consolation uh, game victory. So uh, after the game with the Cougars, Christian faces Lions Classic Division runner-up Francis Parker. Yep, that might be a tough one, but I got it. I, I want to throw it in reverse for a second here and, and Luke Reinkoff's the, the way he is pitching this year as opposed to last year I mean is a difference it's night and day I mean he he said he practiced a lot in the offseason 
and worked with Coach Mitchell and really all the time that he spent practicing in the summer really helped him a lot, and, which is true. I mean, to go seven and a half in relief and then the complete game about two weeks ago, he's, he's looking real good. He's going to be probably one of their number one in the rotation. The Valhalla Norsemen are off to a three and eight start, but they beat Mountain View in the Lions Premier Division behind Evan O'Neill, who's looking good with a .70 ERA so far in three appearances. Yeah, he struck out five and four scoreless innings in that one. Senior Jacob Barbara is batting 400. He had a two-run double. The Norsemen resume their two and one start in the GMC on Monday at La Jolla before hosting Mira Mesa. Now, Valhalla won that anticipated matchup that we talked about against Christian behind senior Tanner Smith, who allowed just two hits over six innings. And despite their record, as we said, they are a sure Grossmont Valley League contender. Uh, Mel Miguel is next. They're three and seven. They snapped a five game skid with a wild 11 to 10 victory over Maranatha Christian in eight innings to get in the Lions' win column. Uh, Coach Coit was certainly pleased about that one. He sent a message to me. He said, They finally closed one out, and maybe that taste of victory will drive them. They've had so many close games. I believe they played, uh, out of those uh, seven losses, uh, five of them have been one run games, or the other team has uh, taken the lead in the seventh inning. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was talking to uh, Coach Coit, and he's really impressed with their, their last win. Um, he's Like you were alluding to, all those games have been like that, and it's been very frustrating for them because they, I think they are not a subpar team. I think they're going to be above 500 when league starts. Well, uh, sophomore Eric Kelly, he drove in uh, junior Nico Camacho with that game winner, and junior Cameron Bozek had three RBI. Freshman Michael Camacho pitched three solid innings. They are at Foothills and at Modern Day in the GMC this week. Uh, the El Cajon Valley Braves, they got some fresh new threads this week and then a two-game winning streak. So Coach Thomas and the Braves, they win a commendable 2-1 and one at the Lions Tournament. Uh, Sebastian Sanchez is a very hot player right now. He's hitting 500 this season on the nose. He drove in five runs in a 15-2 route of Temecula Prep. Uh, senior Jesus Favela, he pitched four shutout innings and can't uh, forget Greg Sanchez. He struck out eight to beat Hoover 10-2. to two. The Braves are hitting 318 as a team, four regulars hitting over 400. Coach Thomas has got them hitting a little Go bit. Braves. <laughs> Uh, West Hills, they've uh, three straight one-run losses at the Lions tournament. So tough start right now with a two and nine record, but they're in every ball game. You mentioned key, one key mistake, and that's what it's come down to each game for the West Hills Wolfpack. They're back in the GMC this week. Uh, they last won in a walk-off in the GMC in that game against uh, Coronado as Cody Pedrero pitched six innings, then singled and scored the game-tying run on that game-winning play. They, you know, did what we do. We go out there and dog pile throw the water all around. <laughs> the Pats pitching has been strong, 3.5 ERA, but a team batting average just below 200. Got to raise that. Um, Mickey Doshman does a fantastic job. I mean, Mickey's been around the game for forever, since it, since the beginning of time, I would like to think. Um, but Mickey does a good job out there. He did say that they do have a lot of youth, and but he did say to expect great things out of his kids come week. The H-12 Prep Baseball Report. Visit the H-12 Sports Academy off of Old Highway 80 in El Cajon. Get lessons from top local instructors. Use our team workout and cage facility specials, newly renovated for baseball and softball. Plus, have your performance metrics analyzed using patented technology in hit tracks. That's the H-12 Sports Academy off of Old Highway 80 in El Cajon. Call Scott Hoppy Hopgood at 619-328-1412. That's the H-12 Sports Academy in El Cajon. Well, it was a great week out at the Lions Tournament this week. Maybe the East County results aren't quite what we wanted, but still some great performances to talk about. And just want to show this uh, great uh, 
memento that they put in the Lions Tournament program in honor of your dad, Bill Dickens, talked about his contributions to the Lions Tournament. I mean, he helped the judge so much compiling all the results and making sure all the right teams got to the right uh, championship and playoff locations. And I mean, that was what Bill did basically for, uh, you know, 40 years. So. Uh, Thank you, Lions Tournament, for that great uh, piece here in the program on uh, on your dad, Dave, uh, Bill Dickens. Uh, Dave, how about uh, next week here on the report? Well, it brings me great pleasure. No offense, fellas, I love the Highlanders, <laughs> but I but I do bring my uh, alumni out here next week and, and two fantastic players in uh, Tyler Hazelhurst and also Bradley Harris of the Granite Hills Eagles. Both of them have been having a spectacular year. Hazelhurst, of course, has been great on the mound and great at the plate. And uh, for myself, Ramon Scott, and Eric Smelko, and Zach Owens, Ramon Scott. Hey, let's see it on the uh, H12 Prep Baseball Report. I mean, we'll look forward to seeing those Eagles, but you know what we say around at Helix, right, guys? Once a Scotty, always a Scotty. All right, H12 Prep Baseball Report from the H12 Academy right here off of Old Highway 80. Come down and see Hoppy Hopgood. We're renovating right now. That's why we missed last week's show. But things are looking good around here. We're going to have uh, some great cage work. Dave and I are going to take that uh, Hit Tracks Challenge and see who wins the Hit Tracks Challenge. I want to thank our other sponsors, Al Sports Shop, Nicolosi's Italian Restaurant. Um, join us again next week on the H12 Prep Baseball Report.